What's up guys, it's Josh here back with another Kansas City Chiefs related video and today I've got another free agency suggestion for the Kansas City Chiefs and today we're looking at more D-line help with the idea of the Chiefs potentially signing Jadeveon Clowney. So the Chiefs recently just added Jerron Reed to the de their defensive line. The former Seahawks defensive tackle came over after being released and uh, he had interest from a lot of other teams. Uh, but he ended up signing with the Chiefs for less money than he was offered by a couple other teams um, to come back and play alongside Frank Clark to play for a Super Bowl contender. He had six and a half sacks last year. Should help out our pass rush tremendously. But as everyone knows, we still need a competent defensive end on the other side of Frank Clark. Whether it be to rush the passer or set the edge, whatever. They just need someone competent over there because they just really didn't last year. Now that somebody could have been Taco Charlton, we don't know, but he did only play a fraction of the snaps last year, and he's coming off an injury, and I'm just not sure he's a starter at this point of his career. Uh, he's a very, fl I mean, he flashed a lot last year, and I really like him, and I think he still has potential, but you don't want to bank on him being the starter. And the Chiefs did already meet with Melvin Ingram, who they reportedly had a good visit with, but obviously we've already kind of beaten that horse to death uh, on my channel about potentially signing Melvin Ingram. So until he signs, we're going to hold off on that and look at some other suggestions. And one of them would be Jadeveon Clowney because he would help out this team's, um, you know, their kind of status on the uh, edge position heading into the draft. Now, I want people to keep in mind, I still want the Chiefs to draft a defensive end, no matter if they sign a veteran, to kind of take over for that guy the next year. Because ideally, if they sign Clowney, it would be like a one-year deal. Um, but, you know, this he would be a stopgap for sure. So just keep that in mind. So why do I say Jadeveon Clowney? Well, because um, if you look at his stats, uh, last year he only played eight games uh, for the Titans, uh, only had... Four passes defended, a forced fumble, and he didn't even have a sack last year. Uh, but he had six QB hits, four tackles for a loss, and 14 solo tackles in those eight games. So it's just really hard to tell with Clowney. But if you do look at his uh, year before in Seattle, he had a lot better of a year. He had 21 solo tackles, 31 combined, seven for a loss, 13 QB hits, and three sacks. And again, the sack numbers don't pop off the charts, but... His pressure rate is still among one of the best at the position. So one thing that I always uh, kind of get into debate with with people who uh, are big Frank Clark defenders, since I've been really critical of Frank Clark, uh, you know, they always bring up his postseason sacks and his sack in this game and that game. But if you look at his overall pressure rate, it's not all that great. Like, he's not consistently getting pressure and beating one-on-ones with uh he's not winning one-on-ones against you know the left tackle he needs to get better at that um but you know if he's getting a good pressure rate then i'm not going to say anything even if his sacks aren't super high you can say that about clowny you can't say that with clark though because his pressure rate and his uh, pass rush win rate isn't super high and there's also this stat um by espn seth walder and it's called sacks created and basically what this is uh, stat indicates is the defensive lineman who first beats their blocker causing disruption thus creating a sack opportunity for someone else but they maybe don't actually finish the sack themselves so for example let's say the ball is snapped and chris jones immediately beats his blocker but um because of that you know whoever was guarding frank clark had to come over and help chris jones so frank clark is free and he gets the sack well that wasn't really frank clark's sack he just finished the sack and frank clark benefited a lot from this if you go back and look at some of his sacks uh you know the ones that people use to call him a beast or whatever i kind of disagree but you kind of get my point right well, Jadavion Clowney is kind of the antithesis of uh, Clark in this scenario because he's really good at getting pressure without getting the sack. And if you could just, you know, if you're talking about adding another guy to this roster who is really good at getting pressure, um, then, you know, that's all I could ask for considering we now have Reed and Jones in the middle along with Clark who you would hope is more productive with Reed and, you know, you know hypothetically Jadavion Clowney. And another uh, nice thing about adding Clowney is you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about him being a full-time starter and if he's going to be healthy or if he's going to be there or not because, like I said, you'd probably draft someone to also come in. And you still have Taco Charlton who can rotate in there. And, you know, that gives you a pretty nice little um, tandem out there, right? Um, but also, 
Clowney, you know, even though he only played eight games last year, he's been a lot better lately. He only played 11 in 2019, but he played 14 in 2018, 16 in 2017, 14 in 2016. And in those uh, seasons uh, where he played um, more than 11 games, he uh, made some kind of like Pro Bowl or, you know, honorable mention kind of uh, award for an award. Um, so he was productive in those years. Uh, and also another thing that you have to take into account is Jadavion Clowney still remains um, one of the highest uh, double team uh, rated defensive ends in the league. So um, like he's double teamed a lot, whereas, you know, someone like Frank Clark is not double teamed a whole lot. Um, in fact, Jadavion Clowney was double teamed uh, more than Frank Clark by a wide margin on this chart. Um, if you guys want to see this chart, I will link it in the description but it basically shows you know how much defensive ends were double teamed and how much they were winning on their pass rush or their pass rushing snaps right and uh Jadavion Clowney blows Frank Clark out of the water on this chart and of course this chart doesn't say everything so I don't want this to be taken as you know pure Frank Clark slander but it's really worth noting because I think Jadavion Clowney is a more productive player than maybe people give him credit for and in fact his his kind of uh, his perception has kind of um, tanked over the years because of where he was drafted. People expect these high, high expectations, and Clowney didn't reach these high expectations. So people have been saying he's terrible now. But people have been saying that he's terrible for so much now that he's kind of become underrated because he's still been a good player. He just never reached that you know top ten draft pick potential that he once had. I mean, Jadavion Clowney, uh, he actually had a PFF grade uh, in the upper 70s. I actually have it in front of me here if you guys want me to read it. Yeah, according to PFF, he had a uh, 74.9 overall grade, which is really, really good. And I believe he had a higher pass rushing grade than uh, any other defensive end on our roster last year. Uh, and then also another thing is he actually averaged a QB pressure every 5.9 pass rush snaps over the last two years. And that's more than free agents Melvin Ingram, who had 8.1, uh, or had a pressure for every 8.1 snaps, and Justin Houston, who had uh, a pressure for every 9.4 snaps. Alden Smith as well, another one Chiefs fans have talked about, uh, only a pressure for every 8.9. So Clowney is still generating a lot of pressure. And also, uh, if we still sign Melvin Ingram, I'd be happy, but Jadeveon Clowney would be even better because he's actually a Steve Spagnuolo scheme fit. Uh, Cl or Mel Melvin Ingram is a little more stocky. He would just be a purely speed rusher, but Clowney, he's 6'5", 255 pounds, and has ability to set the edge. He's really good at stuffing the run. Uh, if you had him and Frank Clark uh, on each side, teams wouldn't be able to just run it on the opposite side of Frank Clark every time now and just automatically get seven yards. Uh, our defensive end rotation at the other spot opposite of Frank Clark was really bad at defending the run. If you get Clowney, that changes things. Uh, so this signing I would really be interested by. Uh, Clowney's market has been pretty slow by all accounts. So I kind of hope the Chiefs check in here because, man, could you imagine Clowney, Reed, Jones, Clark, all rushing the passer on third down? I'd be really happy about that. Um, you got two guys that uh, you would have brought in and Reed and Clowney that could help take the pressure off Jones and Clark. And that would just create opportunities for everybody because uh, who, would the, who would the offense decide to double team? That's a lot of players there you got to worry about. So. Yeah, uh, I'd be really excited about this. So uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments, if you agree, disagree, um, you know, just let's get a discussion going. So that's all I got for today, guys. Make sure you check out my websites, showmefootball.com, and check out my work on arrowheadaddict.com. And make sure you like, share, and subscribe so other Chiefs fans can find this. But that's all I got for today, guys. Peace.